Now I want to move on to limits involving trig functions. And this is where we're going to use those known limits that we just worked out, which helped us find the derivative of sine function, those special limits that came up. We're going to use those to help us find limits of other functions involving sines and cosines. So let's just jot down what we know. These are these special limits. What we know, we know that the limit, this is our newfound knowledge, our newfound tools, sine theta over theta is one, and our other special limit was cosine of theta minus one over theta, and that value is zero. Those are our two special limits that we know. Let's see if we can use those to find limits of these other guys. So what's the limit as x goes to zero of sine two x over x? Well, what happens as x goes to zero? Let's always think about it this way. As x goes to zero, the bottom's going to zero. As x goes to zero, sine, this thing's going to sine of zero, or zero. We got a type zero over zero. Top's going to zero, bottom's going to zero. What's the ratio doing? Don't know. Could do anything. Could go to zero, could go to some finite number other than zero, could go to infinity, could go to positive infinity, negative infinity. Who knows? We don't know at this point. There's, a, there's more work to do is really the, the point here. Whenever it's of type zero over zero, it's an indeterminate form. We, in other words, we can't determine what the answer is just from that information alone. We need to figure out really how fast are the various things going to zero. How fast does the top go to zero? How fast does the bottom go to zero? What's the relationship between the two? So there's more work to do. In, in this particular example, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, could I maybe use this limit that I know already, that sine of theta over theta goes to 1 as theta goes to 0? The only problem is that with the limit that I know, the argument of the, theta, uh, the, argument of the sine function, which is theta, is exactly the same as the thing on the bottom. And that's not true in this example. In this example, the argument is 2x, whereas the thing on the denominator is x alone. Is that going to stop me? No, that's not going to stop me. Why not? Because if it's different, well, then make it the same. I've got a 2x as my argument. Throw a 2 downstairs. Make 2x the denominator. OK, you're probably saying, well, you can't do that. You can't just throw a 2 in the denominator without changing everything. That's a, absolutely, you can't do that without changing everything. What I can do, though, is balance it by throwing an extra 2 up top. So this is our standard trick, multiply by 1 in a fancy way. I'm multiplying by 2 over 2. And so now I bring the 2 out front, limit as x goes to 0 of sine 2x over 2x. And this is now in the perfect position to apply that previous result. This is now x going to 0. The argument of the sine function and the thing on the bottom are exactly the same, both of them going to 0. So this limit has to go to 1. And then that 2 on the outside multiplies to give an answer of 2. Now, I could write down the answer of 2 right here, but I'm going to put one more step in here just in case it's, uh, there's some slight confusion here. And I want to make this entirely clear. What I'm going to do is in this step from here to here is I'm going to introduce a new variable theta, which I'm going to used to replace the variable 2x. So with this new variable, if x goes to 0, then that's the same thing as saying that theta goes to 0, because when an x is really just 1 half of theta. So if x is going to 0, then theta is going to 0. Theta is twice x. So however you want to look at it, x and theta, whichever one of them is going to 0, the other one has to go to 0, because theta is twice the x value. So this can be replaced with theta, and so can this. So I've rewritten my limit in terms of my new variable theta, and now we immediately see that that is equal to 2. So that's the value of our limit. It's 2. Now with trig functions, there's always alternate ways to do these things. Really, it comes from the fact that with any time you have things involving trig functions, well, the identities allow you to rewrite them in terms of other ones. So there's probably other ways to do them. In fact, there's almost always other ways to do them. Uh, let's look at an alternate way. I'm going to look at the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of 2x over x. In fact, many of you might have thought to do this immediately. It's to say, well, sine 2x. I know a double angle identity. That allows me to write sine 2x as 2 sine x cos of x. 
and that's all over x. And now with that double angle identity, it means we can deal with that x on the denominator by partnering it up with the sine on the numerator. And once I've partnered them up, I can see that in the limit, this goes to 1. That's our special limit that we know above. Cos of x as x goes to 0, that also goes to 1. And we've got a 2 out front, so our value is 2. So you can use some identities to rewrite these things. And again, we're using, trying to get it back to one of the limits that we know here, uh, our special limits. Okay, let's look at the last example. Uh, before I get to the last example, uh, before I scroll down to the last example, let's just read it and then make a mental note of one of the limits that we know. So as theta goes to 0, we're looking at sine 2 theta over cos theta minus 1. Cos theta minus 1, that's resembling the fact that I know a limit involving cos of theta minus 1. The only issue is I don't have a theta in my uh, limit that I'm trying to compute, but I have a theta in the special limit that is in my toolbox, one of the known limits that I have. Okay, so is that going to be an issue? Well, let's just look at this limit from you know, the basic principles. What happens as theta goes to 0? As theta goes to 0, the thing on the bottom, cos theta goes to 1, I get a 1 minus 1, so that's going to 0. As theta goes to 0, 2 theta goes to 0, sine of theta, that goes to 0. So this again is of type 0 over 0, it's one of these indeterminate forms. What does the ratio go to? I don't know. I need, I need to do more work. So how do we do more work on this? Well, the idea is you try to take something that you don't know how to deal with it and you split it up into things you do know how to deal with. I do know how to deal with things involving, well, from the previous example, I know how to deal with that, sine 2 theta over theta. I don't know how to deal with it over cos theta minus 1. So I'll split it up. If I throw a theta downstairs, I also have to balance it by throwing a theta upstairs, and now I'm at this stage, where one of the limits I know. This sine 2 theta over theta, actually, um, I'll split it up like this because uh, there, cos theta minus 1 over theta. Sorry, I'm splitting it up like this because I want it to really be in the form of the ones I know above. So the limit as theta goes to 0. Sine 2 theta over theta, I know that one. That's equal to 2. That was our part A limit. Um, what about the next one? Well, this is 1 over cos theta minus 1 over theta. I know cos theta minus 1 over theta goes to 0. So this is 1 over something going to 0. 1 over something that's getting really small. What does the result go to? Well, 1 over something that's getting really small is something that's getting really big. But the problem is I don't know whether it's getting big in the positive or big in the negative. I don't know whether this thing is going to 0 through negative values or positive values or perhaps both, maybe oscillating. I don't know. But I do know that 1 over something getting really small is not going to something finite. It's blowing up. So what I do know is that this does not exist. It's of type 1 over 0. Right? It doesn't exist. It's either going to positive or negative infinity. So what that means is that the entire limit cannot exist. So the entire limit does not exist because one piece of it does exist, but the other piece does not exist, so the whole thing cannot exist. So the limit doesn't exist. It doesn't approach any particular number. Okay, we, we could be a little bit more precise into why it doesn't exist. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a note here. Now, technically, we are done this question. It doesn't exist, and that's it. Uh, but we can be a little bit more precise into why it doesn't exist. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the left and right hand limits of this thing that I've wrote, written does not exist here, type 1 over 0, because it's really going to positive or negative infinity. And let's figure out when it does one versus the other. So as theta goes to 0 from the right, well, as theta goes to 0 from the right, this thing is going to 0 through the right, from the right. What's this thing going to? Well, cos of theta minus 1. Cos of theta is always smaller than 1. So this is always going to be negative, but it's going to 0. So it's going to 0 through negative values. So this is going to, well, it's a negative value, and 
as a result, we know that the ratio is going to zero, so it's got to be going to zero through negative values. And so that means the whole thing has to be going to negative infinity, because it's one over something that's really small in the negative. On the other hand, we'll get that if we go to zero from the left, one over cos of theta minus one over theta, that thing goes to negative infinity. Oh, sorry, positive infinity. Why is that? Well, as I go to zero through values that are negative, close to zero but negative, slightly less than zero, cos of theta minus one, still negative, theta, that's a negative. The ratio then is negative over negative, so it's a positive, going to zero, so it's going to zero through positive values. So it's getting close to, po or it's blowing up to positive infinity. So what that means is that even though our original limit doesn't exist, we can be specific as to why it doesn't exist. The values are blowing up, but it depends on which direction you come from as to how it blows up. So in particular, we have that this is sine of 2 theta over cos theta minus 1. That is going to, if you come from the right, it's going to negative infinity. And if you come from the left, it's going to positive infinity. All right, so that's it for this section. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and we will see you again next time.